They say a picture is worth a thousand words and a movie is worth a million, so I'm going to start with this brief video to provide a bit of context to my presentation. Autosale takes about half an hour to set up and launch. The video shown here was shot at Balmoral Beach in Sydney, Australia. Initially, tests were performed with a human on board, but later, tests were performed unmanned. The wind here is about 5 knots from the west, gusting to 7 to 8 knots. As you can see, the wing maintains a relatively constant angle relative to the wind, even while the boat is moving around. We now demonstrate how, unlike a conventional sail, this wing sail will not depower when the boat turns into the wind, resulting in this capsize. Instead, if we want to depower by steering, we turn away from the wind, as shown there. Good morning and welcome to the ACFR. I'm Edward Pawthorn and my presentation today is going to be on the development of an autonomous sailing vessel. I'm going to start off with an overview of what exactly an autonomous sailing vessel is, um, introducing the concept and design of the wing sail that I'm using, the system architecture, the modelling and uh, simulation I've performed, the guidance, navigation and control algorithms I've developed, and finally wrapping up with a conclusion and introducing the future works that I plan to undertake. So an autonomous sailing vessel is basically a sailing boat which is able to react to its environment on its own, um, carrying out a predefined mission. And this is Autosail, which is my implementation of an autonomous sailing vessel. We have the hull, centreboard and rudder, and the wing assembly, which comprises of the main wing itself, a tail trailing behind it, and the counterweight and wind instruments out the front. Note that all of the components shown here in orange I have fabricated and designed myself. So for those of you here who are not familiar with um, the physics of sailing, and it looks like there might not actually be many of you today, um, conventional sails actually act like aerofoils. And in fact, if we um, take an aeroplane and we remove one wing and then we stick the thing on its side like that, we basically have a sailing boat. And I've used this knowledge to develop this free rotating rigid wing cell that you've seen in the previous slide. Um, I've got this trailing control surface which uh, enables it to always trim relative to the wind. I've also designed um, a symmetrical aerofoil section for the wing um, with a low Reynolds number application in mind. And um, this gives me improved lift to drag ratios over conventional sails, which is very important in the context of sailing. Now, as I said, this, um, this, this wing assembly always trims relative to the wind. And that's because the tail is analogous to the trim tab on um, like a, an aeroplane's control surface. Um, so we have the, the, the forces due to the tail and the wing itself. And then it's the forces due to the tail which counteract the pitching moment of the wing. And that's what gives it um, the stability. Um, and also sets the angle relative to the wind. Uh, finally, obviously we have no ropes here, which is great because it means nothing gets tangled. So I've um, developed and um, constructed this wing myself using a range of advanced composite techniques. I'd love to get into them, but we don't have time, so if you've got any questions, feel free to ask at the end. In terms of the high-level system architecture, we have um, components located on the shore or with the ground control station and the components that are located on the ASV itself. Now the two are linked with triple redundancy via a 4G wireless link, a 433 MHz telemetry link and finally a 2.4 GHz RC um, control system for manual override. On board we have three microcontroller units and one embedded Linux board. The three microcontroller boards are connected via a CAN bus and we also have a whole host of sensors on board. 
I have um, designed and assembled those three microcontroller boards myself. Um, they all have modern 32-bit um, processors and run ChibiOS real-time operating system. As I said, um, there's this distributed architecture using the CAN bus. I also have the embedded Linux board here, and that communicates directly with the main controller board. Uh, I've got a triple redundant um, data logging scheme whereby I can log to a micro SD card on the main microcontroller board, micro SD card on the embedded Linux board, and finally to the uh, ground control station via the wireless telemetry link. All of the device drivers for the three microcontroller boards are developed in C, while the algorithms uh, have been developed and tested in Simulink. Um, this allows me to then easily auto-generate C code from my Simulink model and deploy it directly to the main controller board. In the context of modeling and simulation, uh, modeling refers to the process of deriving mathematical equations that refer to reality. And as you see here, I've derived quite a few of them. I'd love to get into them, but again, we just don't have the time. So I'm going to provide a brief overview of the six degree of freedom, kinematic, and kinetic models that I have derived from first principles. Firstly, I consider the hydrodynamic damping, added mass, and residual drag of the hull. I've also modeled the rudder and centerboard using thin foil theory. And finally, I've developed a hydrostatic model of the hull based on my CAD drawings. The wing is, met, uh, is modeled as a one degree of freedom torsional mass damper system. I've already gone through the forces that go into that. The aerodynamic coefficients that um, create those forces are derived from an export simulation of my specific wing section. This model is simulated uh, using Simulink, and as you see here at the top left, this is my highest level block diagram view of that Simulink model. Note that this model um, has several layers of depth below it, and um, a few of those blocks are just illustrated here on the right. At the top left here, we have the green GNC block, which I've developed. That contains all of my guidance, navigation, and control algorithms. And it's from this block which the C code is automatically generated and deployed to the main microcontroller. I also model the actuator dynamics, the ASV kinematics and kinetics themselves, the environment, and the sensors. Finally, all of this simulation data is fed into the visualization block which creates this beautiful 3D animation of the system. Now, in the context of sailing, we often think of everything relative to the true wind. And that's why these two diagrams I have here both have the true wind and arrows up the top, and all of the lines are drawn relative to that. Also, the biggest limitation of sailing is that we can't actually steer directly into the wind. And because of that, we have this diagram here in the middle where this shaded region at the top represents angles relative to the wind that we can't sail. Now, in a boat with a uh, free rotating wind sail like mine, the same exists for this region down the bottom here pointing away from the wind, which is a bit different to conventional sailing. So, this diagram basically gives rise to two modes of sailing. One termed the upwind or downwind mode, and that's where our destination point is going to be anywhere in one of these two shaded no-go zones. And the second mode is termed the reach mode, and that's where our destination is anywhere in this clear region. The second of these two points, in terms of guidance, is very uh, simple to handle. We can use traditional guidance methods and basically point the boat towards the direction of the destination, and we'll get there. In the case of the first mode, however, where our destination is somewhere else, this prevents a bit of a problem. And this is where this diagram here on the right comes into play, where we have the destination point PD directly into the wind of our initial starting point P0. As you can see, we can't go directly there, and instead we have to follow this zigzaggy path represented by the blue line. Now the determination of what exactly this path is, and at what point we perform these, we perform these turns, uh, comes down to a bit of science and a bit of art. And that's because there are an infinite number of possibilities in deriving these paths. And I'd love to get, get into this again, but uh, we don't have time. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So, as I mentioned at the start, all of these lines are derived relative to the true wind. And because of that, 
we need to have some sort of estimation of the wind state as well as the vehicle state. And that's where the navigation module comes in. Finally, we have the control module, which is responsible for manipulating the rudder to, in order to achieve a heading and manipulating the tail in order to control the, the wing. And that's how we actually achieve this blue path. So uh, along the course of this thesis, I've um, really taken away a lot. I've um, learned things about hardware, software, mechanical development, um, to uh, advance composite techniques, and I can truly say that you know the list of learning outcomes is um, too list uh, too long to list here. Um, and I believe, in conclusion, that I've um, set it, basically achieved what I set out to achieve, and that is uh, developing a comprehensive modeling modeling and simulation environment of my system, and also demonstrating um, the operational autonomous sailing vessel which you've seen in this video. So based on all of this work. I am, uh, based on all this work, I am um, going to be entering two international competitions. I'm also preparing two conference papers. And um, I'm going to further this work by uh, implementing some advanced um, course optimization based on wind shifts and also advanced online optimization of speed using wind and heading control. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, Feel free to fire away. So we have three minutes for questions and answers while the next speaker get ready. Any question? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, um, given the, the downwind um, issues with sailing, if, if you actually restricted the, the, the swing angle, could you yeah. actually sail downwind? Uh, yep, you could. So the whole idea, or well, in conventional sailing, the whole idea of downwind sailing is rather than using lift, you're using drag, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so there is some, yeah, there's going to be basically a, a way off of uh, whether or not the downwind drag sailing is going to be more efficient, the direct downwind yeah. sailing is going to be more efficient then um, sailing at angles using lift and generating more force. Okay. So uh, that's something I haven't actually looked at just because the design of my wing is free rotating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's something that could be looked at um, trying to determine whether or not it is more efficient um, to sail downwind by drag yeah. or sail downwind at angles by lift. Okay. And in the case of many modern skiffs, um, they sail downwind at angles, yeah. um, and that's the oh, way okay. it's done, because right. it is more efficient. Really? Okay. Yeah. We have still time. In terms of composite materials, how did you come to the conclusions that you did in the use? Okay, so if we go back to that slide, um, basically considerations um, for the design were obviously that it had to be lightweight, it had to be strong enough, um, and to some extent it had to be uh, kind of, you know, waterproof and yeah. Um, durable to the uh, environment. So what I've done is um, I've used a polyurethane foam core and um, fiberglass polyester resin laminate um, for the ribs, also for the, the bulkheads that you see there and here. And then finally the leading edge, um, which really gives it its strength, is um, basically just um, fiberglass polyester um, on a kind of cardboard core um, to give it the shape. And then uh, finally I have as you can see in the bottom left, I have a polyethylene heat shrink film as the skin. Um, that also, as well as obviously giving it its skin, it actually gives it a little bit of um, strength as well, um, holding the whole structure together. So I guess in response to the question, what, um, you know, what motivated me to this design, um, I guess uh, this structure is somewhat similar to designs used in um, the America's Cup Wings where they had this, this rib assembly with the leading edge being, um, you know, providing um, the strength in, in that, that shape, that conical shape, and also um, having the bulkheads in the middle, and that's where all the strength comes from. How much of the weight? So this um, weighs 20 kilos, including mast um, and equipment, which is quite heavy. It's quite a bit heavier than I had expected and hoped for. But, um, I mean, it's, I deemed it acceptable. Yeah, it's not small. The, the convention, yeah, it's not small, it's 3.6 metres tall, um, has a cord length of 1.2 metres, 